us when you took up this project and why and how you and Vivian got together? I became interested in the Bracero program through Henry. Um, I was writing a book with a colleague of mine, Raul Fernandez, on Chicano history, and we wanted to talk about migration, the Bracero program being part of the migration from Mexico to the United States. I looked up Henry in Yahoo or Google or something, and I found his address and phone number, and I got a hold of him, and I interviewed him. And if you look in the chapter on migration in that book, you'll see I quoted Henry. So that was about, oh, 2002 or somewhere around there. Uh, and then I got interested in the Baracero program and wrote about that. And we were in the labor studies program at UCI. And you suggested to me, why don't we do a, a film? I'm not a filmmaker, I'm a historian by trade. I'm used to you know, writing with a legal pad and stuff. <laughs> 19th century. <laughs> um, and so she suggested we do a film. And since I knew Henry already with his work, that was a good start. And I um, actually, the very first filming we did was in Stockton and Luis Magana. We, that's where we went to the Stockton Via del Bracero. Um, and we filmed there. That was our very first filming. And, I th and our very first interview was with Henry. How hard was it to find people to interview the former Russells? They're everywhere. <laughs> There's organizations. Uh, UC Irvine is about eight miles from Santa Ana, and they meet once a month in Jerome Park, <laughs> and they meet in Los Angeles, and they meet in Stockton, and they meet in El Centro and Oxnard. Uh, it's not fun, hard now to find a Brasero. But maybe 10, 15 years ago would have been very, very difficult. They're organizing because of the 10% that was taken out of their checks. She had a hand. Could you talk a little about the end of the program, the Bracero program? Uh, like well, Ernesto Galarza, yeah. Yeah, Ernesto Galarza had a great deal to do with that, uh, testifying before Congress. But Henry knows more about that than I do. Uh, but there was. Um, a movement of a number of people, uh, Henry B. Gonzalez, uh, congressman in Texas, um, I believe Ed Royball in, uh, in Los Angeles, and, and others were, I mean, just showed very clearly what the program was about. There was, there was no administration. There was, you know, drawers did what they wanted to do. Um, but Henry could probably talk about that one. For several hours. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just say, I'll just add a few words. It would be impossible to overestimate the influence of the Catholic Church as the program began to wind down. The, the, the the aspect of the program which most concerned the Catholic Church was the moral aspect, in that it was breaking up families. And that was one half of what I conceived to be a, a two-pincher movement, which uh, ultimately brought about the end of the program through congressional action. The other half being economic arguments, of which Ernesto Galarza was the leading spokesman. But by 1964, which was the final year, Ernesto had essentially retired, and the torch was being the torch was being carried by the uh, AF of LCIO, particularly some young Turks, who like me got uh, <laughs> became true believers that this was this was the most important single issue facing organized labor, and so they lobbied tirelessly, and uh, between those two principal influences, they did bring about the end of the program. Uh, Henry, I have a question. Um, there are a lot of other workers' programs in like Middle East and other countries. So you have researched and you know saw the Bracero program and everything. Would you like to talk a little bit about like if what is it is it possible to have a good program for workers and 
if it was better for them that ultimately they could stay here and have good lives. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Like, well, I don't, I don't want to monopolize things. Vivian, would you like to say anything about that? <coughs> I think, I mean, I would just say that there is no good guest worker program. That if, if uh, no good model for one, that uh, one of the grandchildren of the Bracero said, I think he said it best, a worker is a worker. Yeah. That if you need workers, pay them the same as any other worker. And if you can't pay them that, then you shouldn't be in business. You know, or you have to create a system where everybody's treated fairly. Otherwise, you're always going to create injustice, both for the workers who are brought in and for the workers who are there. I don't Gil, if you want to say anything else. Well, one of the problems, too, is that we've institutionalized poverty in the area where a lot of these workers were coming into, in agriculture. So that uh, even the most privileged workers living in state, uh, California state housing for agricultural workers, half of them live in poverty. Um, who knows what the others who are living in, you know, wherever they can live, probably the vast majority living in poverty. So they would be coming to work and would be guaranteed poverty, except that they would be temporary workers sent out and coming in without the kind of rights that other workers would have to organize and stuff like that. So they would be controlled, cheap, contract labor. That's what guest worker programs are about. Um, um, I think Kitty Calavita said it best. They are um, easily acquired and easily disposed of. That's what contract guest worker programs are about. Um, they're a grower's dream, as Henry, you said once before. A grower's dream. And, and or an employer's dream. The, I mean, the other thing is, why do people leave their homes? And why is it that people have to go? You know, I think that goes back to the, you know, the uh, broader problem of empire, in which um, poor countries are really deprived of the ability to have a, a, a just government that can develop their country, that can provide jobs where people can organize and get good wages. And so it's not just the guest worker program, it's really the whole system of imperialism and colonialism that we're talking about. Well, we, we brought in the question of NAFTA free trade, and so the solution for the uprooting of massive uprooting of peoples in Mexico, which one can compare, if we were to look at it very carefully, one can compare to the mass uprooting of peoples in Algeria during the French colon, co colonial uh, colonization. That's what happened under French rule. Massive numbers of people were just uprooted, and this is what's happening under NAFTA. Massive numbers of people are being uprooted. And the way to deal with that is through a guest worker program, a wall and a guest worker program. <laughs> Contradiction. <laughs>